first job out of college was working for Lehman Brothers. When you work at a big place like that, they hire a class of analysts all at once. So there were 300 of us or something like that hired. And you go through basically like a six week training. And I got placed in my group, which was the, um, what they call global real estate group. And basically we were working with publicly traded companies that were real estate companies, lodging companies, anybody that had large real estate holdings. So I got placed in that group in late August of 2001. And that group um, had the 26th floor, or part of the 26th floor, of the World Financial Center, which is directly across the street from where the World Trade Center was. Right. Pretty shortly after getting placed in that group, I got put on the team that handled Starwood Hotels. And so Starwood Hotels owns like Weston and W and St. Regis and Sheridan and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and so I was working on the team that was responsible for that account and uh, basically worked super late on September 10th because we had a pitch book that I needed to get a draft to my VP on September 11th um, so that we could get that in because they had a big um, they had a big bond uh, debt deal that was maturing and we were going to work with we, we were pitching them to refinance some of their debt with a bond offering so I worked on that pitch book until probably um, 10, 30 or 11 o'clock at night on September 10th. So I went down the lobby, took a car home, went to bed, set my alarm, left myself about two hours worth of work. I needed to be, uh, I needed to have a, a draft of the pitch book to my VP by 10 a.m. So I set my alarm, went to bed, crashed, had worked, you know, from like, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. until 11 p.m. It's basically a 14 hour day. Woke up the next morning to my cell phone ringing. And I look at my nightstand, I look at the clock, and it's like 8 40 something. And I'm like, oh shit, I overslept. I pick up the phone to my mom. I'm like, mom, thanks for calling. I gotta go. I'm late. I gotta, you know, I was supposed to, I had planned on being in there at 8 a.m. And every morning, I took the, I lived up at 21st and 8th Avenue, and I took the ACE train, which is the blue line, into the World Trade Center, into the basement of the World Trade Center. And then there was a sky bridge from the World Trade Center over to the World Financial yeah. Center. Um, and so I would take the sky bridge, walk across, go up to my office. So my mom's like, whoa, 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 slow down. A plane that flew into the turn on TV. There's a plane that flew into the World Trade Center. So I turned it on, and I'm like, "Well, that's kind of crazy." And um, but I'm like, "Mom, I gotta, I gotta get that. I gotta get to work." Um, subway still it says the subway's still running. I should be fine. Thinking like oh, that's weird. Like some guy flew a small plane. It, like how did that? How does that happen? Like, how's a plane flying that low, and how do you, yeah. like, not swerve or what? Like, that's just a weird accident. So, jump in the shower, shower as quickly as I can, getting dressed, have TV on. My phone goes off again, and um, my mom says, you know, your dad and I are watching this, and we really don't think you should go down there. And... Um, my mom was like, you know, I'm talking to your dad, and he thinks this is just looking really bad. And my dad's a my dad's a, a private pilot. Okay. So he's looking at it and like, like, how is this? like it just didn't seem. You know, I don't think he had made the leap to terrorist attack, but mm -hmm. something about it just was as a, a as someone who had knowledge of flying small planes, just seemed off. Yeah. So my mom was like, I'm talking to your dad, and your dad really doesn't, you know, we really don't want you to go down there. 
So I said, okay. I kind of thought twice because my mom, you know, might be the type to say, hey, don't go down there. But my dad is just like all about work, be productive. Like it was very out of character in my mind for him to tell me to go into work late. Which is what, I, what, which is what I was being oh, in my mind. Right. What the message was at that point. Yeah. So, you know, I uh, I still get ready because I'm like, okay, as soon as I think that it's it's okay, and you know, it's funny how your mind goes to things. I'm like, at least you know, um, if I'm late getting this pitch book in, there's some reason that I'm not down there. Um, so hopefully they give me kind of a free pass on the fact mm -hmm. that this pitch book is late. My mind immediately went to like, this is what I need to do, and this is what it was due, and I got to make sure that I'm doing a good job, and whatever. Yeah. So I sat in my apartment, you know, 30 blocks away from the World Trade Center, and watched it on TV. Um, watched the second plane hit on the TV, yeah. at which point everybody's like, oh, this is not an accident. Um, so, something, someone was watching over me, and, you know, luckily no one from my building, you know, was hurt or injured or died, but I had a lot of friends that were down there who had a very crazy day and saw a lot of crazy stuff, and, yeah. you know, in the aftermath saw people jumping and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff that was happening down there. So, I was spared having to witness any of that stuff um so then when the towers collapsed and i can't remember whether it was the first tower or the second tower but one of them fell on our building or fell it fell kind of straight down but because it was literally a two right or there. three lane street across mm -hmm. you know even falling straight down the building so big it that's took out a corner of our building so yeah that's my that's intense man yeah it was it was wild. I mean, I'm obviously very fortunate that, sure. you know, yeah. but I mean, the, the, the biggest thing for me was, you know, when you're 20, I was 22 at the time, mm -hmm. 22, 23, you think you're completely, you know, invincible. Right? And then something like this happens and you're like, oh crap, I could be sitting at work and something could happen and my whole world could be flipped upside down or I could be killed or I could die or whatever. Yeah. So that, that actually um, is what probably compelled me to leave Lehman, start the business before Scan Digital, and then start Scan Digital. Um, because it's like, you never know what's going to happen. Like, if you think there's something you want to do, do it's it. sooner rather than later. That's awesome. So, but yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, that's, well, just the fact that you would take the, the train in to the World Trade Center and then use the Sky Bridge, like, that's... Like, and, I was in that and building. You, kind of, you woke up late. Yeah. Isn't that the first time you're ever late, though, too? I don't know if you're sleeping. Oh, yeah. Right. That's, the, that, that's probably... That's, that's the only time I can remember oversleeping. There was one time like two years ago that Lisa and I had a mix up on who was setting an alarm when we overslept on a flight. This is literally two times in my life that I can remember oversleeping. Yeah. So that's where it's just like, yeah. you know. The odds of that. 